Hi, this is Ramin, your tutor from Alberta Real Estate School. We have been doing a lot of videos on the real estate exams, but I get questions about the mortgage exams all the time. So today we will take a look at what to expect on the mortgage exams. So let's dive in. Let's take a look at what to expect on the fundamentals of mortgage brokerage exam. First thing, it is a computer-based exam. Now you do have to go to the exam center and you have to book it through Yardstick, which is through MyRECA. Um, and once you get to the exam center, it will be on the computer. So you don't have to write anything, absolutely no writing required. You would log into the computer and your exam will be ready and you will do the exam there. So it's completely computer-based. Number of questions that you would see on the exam would be 100. So it's one of the shorter exams, which is nice. All of the questions will be multiple choice questions. So you don't need to really memorize too much stuff. You don't need to um, write any kind of essays, just multiple choice questions. You do get three hours to complete the exam and all the questions have to be done within the three hours. So there's no extensions once the time is up your exam will be done and you'll get the results. Now you get three hours for 100 questions, which means for each question you have less than two minutes. So less than two minutes per question. Now in this case, what I recommend is if you get stuck on a question, instead of spending five minutes or 10 minutes trying to think through the question, I would suggest just skip the question. When you are doing the exam on your, through Yardstick or when you do the actual exam, you are able to go backwards. You can go to the previous questions and also on the side, it will display all the questions. The ones that you have not attempted will be um, will be lighter shade and the ones that you have attempted, those will turn dark blue. So you'll be able to see just by looking at the numbers, which ones are, are left to do. So this is why I would recommend uh, don't waste too much time. Just go through the questions. When you are done with all the questions, then come back to the ones that you were not so sure about. So you have less than two minutes. Make sure you use your time wisely there. In terms of passing percentage, you do need 70% to pass the exam, which means out of 100, you need 70 questions to be correct. Now let's take a look at what are the different um, units that are in here. So in terms of the first fundamentals of mortgage brokerage, we have nine units in total, and uh, we're looking at the exam weightings here. In terms of the units that are most important, it will be the middle unit. So from unit four, to unit eight, these are the most important units. So unit four is real property law worth 20%, mortgage law worth 12%, real estate act rules and regulations, this is worth 20% again, mortgage fraud awareness, this is worth 15%. So just the middle units are worth a lot of mark, first, uh, first two, three units and the last unit not worth as much. So if you run out of time in preparing for the exam, make sure you do focus on the units that are are more important. So you're able to score higher marks in there. So that's how I would look at it. Just focus on the ones that are worth more versus the ones that are not. But overall, you have 100 questions. So majority of these questions would be from the middle units. In terms of the type of questions to expect, there will be straightforward, some questions would be just definition questions. So they will give you a definition of something and they will ask, what is this, the definition of, and you would have to give that thing, for example. Uh, so if they say, so two ways to ask the question, one is, for example, real property. What is the definition of real property or which statement best describes real property? So real property is our land, fixed improvements plus intangible rights of ownership. So that will be one of the options and you can pick that. Other option or other way they can ask you this question is they will say which of the following describes the statement um, and in the, in, the, um, in the quotations they will have, uh, it includes the land, 
fixed improvements plus intangible rights of ownership, which term best describes this. And underneath you will have various options of which real property will be one. So that's the one you will pick. So two ways to ask definition questions. They can give you the term and ask for the definition or they can give you the definition and or the statement and then you will have to choose what term it describes. So definition questions will be one type of questions. And then you also have scenario questions. Scenario questions are basically where they will try to test the concept that you have learned. So they're trying to test your understanding of those concepts in real life scenarios. Uh, so in this case, they will give you a scenario. There's a real estate professional and selling a property to a buyer, or they can say there's a mortgage professional working with the borrower, and then they will give you a scenario on what happens. And based on that, they will ask you a question. So in this case, you will just have to read the scenario carefully. Don't get too hung up on the names of people just take a look at what they're trying to get to just get to the bottom of the question what they're looking at and then go backwards and read the question again uh, so scenario questions will be part of those questions as well you get two attempts to pass the course so first attempt you go write the exam if you don't pass you do have the option of writing the exam again within 24 hours you are allowed to book the exam again now every time you book the exam there's a 150 dollar fee that you will pay yardstick in order to write the exam so keep that in mind. But once your two attempts are done, so let's say you did not pass on the second attempt, then you would have to retake the course again. So you would have to pay your $1,250 again in order to retake the course. So you'll have to pay for the course. And then you would have to go through all the activities and quizzes once again. So it's better to just pass it on the first attempt. Uh, in terms of the calculation, there won't be too many math or calculation questions in the first course. However, the second course is heavily in terms of there's lots of calculations that you'll have to learn. Even in the terms of the second one, it's not heavy on calculations, but there are calculations uh, that you will have to do. So second course is where you will need your calculator. First one, not so much. You will get your results right away as soon as you submit your exam. Now, you don't have to take the three hours to complete the exam. You can finish it even within half an hour if you're able to do so. Whatever time you need, you do that and then you submit your exam. As soon as you submit it, you will get your results right away. It will say, congratulations, you passed, and it will tell you what marks you got. It will also email them to you. So you'll get a breakdown of all the, all the different units. So it will say in the first unit, you got 80%. Second unit, you got 56%. So it'll break it down by the unit. It won't tell you the answer. So they do not tell you what the correct answer is for any of them. And they don't tell you which questions you got wrong. However, they will tell you uh, by the unit, which units you did not do well on and which ones you really did well on. So all of that will be there, but you'll get the results right away. So before you walk out of the exam center, you will know where you stand. So let's recap. First of all, it is a computer-based exam. You would go to the exam center and log into the computer and you would do the exam online. And then there will be 100 questions on the exam. You get three hours to complete the exam. All the questions are multiple choice and you need 70% to pass. So basically you need 70 questions correct. There will be some definition questions and some scenario questions, and then not a lot of math questions. So don't worry about calculations. Uh, you will get your results right away. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you need any extra help in preparing for your mortgage exams, I invite you to visit our website, www.albertarealestateschool.com. We have notes and also provide tutoring if you need help in going through the course material, or you can give us a call at 587-936-7779. That's it for today. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.